We've all dreamt the day where we could instantly teleport to a new destination instead of driving in a car for six hours. Well, today's episode is all about quantum teleportation, but it's only for communication purposes as of right now, so we just better keep on dreaming. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. And today, we're talking about the recent discovery of quantum teleportation. Wow, it seems like it was just a few weeks ago that I made an episode about quantum computers and how quantum internet would be a good thing for us to have. Well, <laughs> thanks to a team led by Caltech, we now have this achievement unlocked. To really understand what's happening with quantum teleportation, we need to understand what quantum entanglement is. But first, do me a favor and click the subscribe button and leave a comment down in the comments section where the comments go. Quantum entanglement is when two particles are connected to each other in a way that makes it hard to know if they are actually connected as two separate particles or just the same particle in two different states. Hmm. Let me explain. So imagine we have particle A and particle B. When we measure the movement of particle A, we instantly know the movement of particle B. Only it's not like you might think. If particle A is moving upward, particle B is moving downward 100% of the time. In whatever direction that A is moving, B is the opposite every time. And this is either because B is responding to A's behavior, but it's happening so fast we can't see that it's a response, or the likely answer is that it's a one-to-one opposite behavior, like a mirrored image. You see, light is the fastest thing in the universe. Only when it comes to these entangled particles, when we measure one of them, we instantly know the behavior of the other one faster than the speed of light. To clarify, imagine Particle A is here in my hand, and particle B is on the moon. If we measure the movement of particle A, and it seems to be spinning in a left direction, we know that on the moon, that particle is moving in the right direction, or whatever the opposite was that I just said this one was. (laughs) By the time we would shoot light from here to the moon to that other particle, the behavior has already happened. It's faster than the time the light would take to get there. Yeah, that means that this entanglement is actually faster than light. And it doesn't matter how far away you separate these particles. It could be light years beyond. And they will still behave in the exact same way, which is opposite of each other, at the exact same time. To really dumb it down, entanglement is when two particles are connected across time and space, and the behavior of one tells us the behavior of the other. For this to work in the world of quantum internet, that means we take two particles, one of them we put in a whatever machine and it goes through a fiber optic cable to another location. So we say that we have one here in New York and one there in California. And once it's traveled to the other destination, whatever we do with A in New York happens to B at the same time. So you had two particles that had to be sent through fiber optics to two different locations. How's that teleportation? It sounds like normal travel to me. Well, you're right. But now that those particles are in two different locations, the encoded data of this one directly affects the encoded data of this one, making this a truly unique form of sharing data in two different locations. Once we have these particles separated in ways that don't require fiber optics, imagine somebody being on the moon or on Mars. That data is instant. There is no longer a need to wait hours or days to get a response. It's going to be real-time communication. And actually, just back in February of 2020, the U.S. Department of Energy unveiled blueprints for national quantum internet. And as I mentioned briefly in another episode, quantum internet is incredibly safe. Anyone trying to access the information that's being transferred between two locations interrupts the particles, and therefore they cannot get information. This would allow for a virtually unhackable network, and most likely this would first be picked up by healthcare industries or banks, 
and of course, government, anything to do with national security. But over time, that could be a handheld device. We know that right now with these quantum teleportations, they're actually using everyday objects like fiber optic cables. So right now, it is a combination of today's technology and tomorrow's technology. So it may not be too long before we have quantum internet in our phones. That would be scary. <laughs> and as of right now, Chicago, Illinois is actually one of the primary locations for quantum teleportation. They have a 52 mile loop that has been incredibly successful and will soon be up to 80 miles. So as we see the construction of national quantum internet, it's exciting to see what other discoveries will come along throughout that process. Sometimes we take for granted the technology that's right in front of us. I mean, the first iPhone came out in 2007. Colored television wasn't widely available into the 1960s. One day, we'll look back and laugh at how slow gigabit internet was and how we thought 5G internet cell service was so fast. And hopefully this means that we'll have less identity theft thanks to a more secure network. But no matter how fast we send information, we can never stop grandma from responding to that spam email or picking up the phone and telling some random stranger her social security number because her vehicle warranty is almost up. But she hasn't had a vehicle in like 10 years. Come on, grandma. As always, thanks for watching. And what did you learn today? But first, click the subscribe button because new episodes come out every single Sunday. And if you like this one, you don't want to miss the next one. Who knows what that'll be about? I don't know. I haven't written it yet. <laughs>